Trash talking in any sport is when a player is so confident that they're better than the competition, they speak up and let it be known. Maybe it's just to get in another player's head. But the main point of it is to benefit the trash talker. But that's not always so much the case. Because in these six cases, trash talk was definitely thrown out there, but it ended up instantly backfiring, so much so that these players or even fans instantly regretted it opening their mouths. Now, all of these six cases are within the past 10 years. But with that being said, let's get into it with number one, that's game. Back in 2015 when Paul Pierce played for the Wizards, they were in the middle of a second round matchup with the Atlanta Hawks. In game 3, Paul Pierce had just hit a fall away jump shot that went off the glass to win the game at the buzzer. And then when asked in an interview if he called bank, he said I called game. And then you fast forward to game 5 where Pierce was again in a similar situation. Down by 2 with 8 seconds left on the clock, he hits a wide open 3 right in front of the Hawks bench, turns around and yells series. And not only would he end up instantly regretting this when Al Horford would actually win that game with a putback seconds later, but he'd regret it even more when the Hawks would go on to also win game 6, game 7, and the entire series. And as we've come to find out, it's not uncommon for Pierce to make outrageous claims like he did here. Like most recently when he said he pioneered the step back, is a better wing shooter than Klay Thompson, and had a better career than Dwayne Wade. The only step back that this man pioneered was this one. Number 2. What's Linsanity? One of the biggest breakouts in the history of sports was Jeremy Lin and Lin Sanity, which officially started on February 4th, 2012, where Jeremy Lin would get moved from being the last man in the Knicks rotation to a starter that put up 25, 28, and 23 points in his first ever three starts. He came out of nowhere and was quickly becoming the biggest story in the league and his fourth start was coming up against Kobe Bryant and the Lakers. In an interview before the game, Kobe said this. Are you surprised at the production that Lens had over the past week? I don't even know what he's done. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. I'll take a look at the time though. And this. Would you consider guarding him if, if he's having one of those games? <laughs> <laughs> Now Danny Green of the Toronto Raptors said recently that Kobe knew exactly who Lin was and what he had done, and that he was just acting like that because Kobe didn't think Lin deserved the respect. While Lin had said that at this time he was still not making enough money to have a car, so he was taking a taxi to the game and saw that clip of the Kobe interview. So in his head he told himself that he had to have a big game that day. And not only did he have a big game, but he arguably had the best game during the Linsanity era. Outscoring Kobe Bryant by single-handedly taking over the game and putting up 38 points and 7 assists, leading the Knicks to beating the Lakers by 13. Kobe tried disrespecting Lin, but Jeremy just used that as motivation to prove him wrong, and it worked. Lin said after the game the media asked him if he thought Kobe knew who he was now, and he almost responded by saying, who's that, but decided to take the more humble route instead. Big time missed opportunity. That would have been legendary. Number 3, Chris Bosh's girlfriend. This one took place a little over 10 years ago, during a game between the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Toronto Raptors. Before Bosh and LeBron were teammates on the Heat winning championships together, when they were still playing against each other. And during this 2008 game, there was a lot of trash talk going on, and not from Bosch to LeBron or vice versa. It was Chris Bosch's girlfriend and his cousin who were sitting courtside. They were letting James have it all night long, and by the end of the third quarter the Cavs were down 57-70, to and LeBron had only put up 15 points on a poor 31% shooting so far. So Bosch's girlfriend and cousin felt like it was a safe time to amp up their trash talk but little did they know that would be LeBron's breaking point, because he would go on to give it everything he had in the fourth. And as he started to heat up, the girls would get quieter and quieter, until they were flat out silent when LeBron finished the fourth with 24 points, putting up a monster 39-11-8 for the game, leading the Cavs to coming back and winning the game. And right as it was ending, he walked over to both girls, pointed at them and said, it's your fault, this is because of you. And then in a post game interview when asked about it, he said that they were the reasons the Raptors lost that night. Because they ticked him off a bit. I mean these two girls tried to have fun and kick James while he was down, and it definitely backfired. I'm sure that was a long and a hard talk with Chris Bosch after the game. That probably sounded a lot like this. Yeah. 
But seriously, this isn't the only time trash talk against LeBron has backfired. Because there's still number 4 when the Warriors woke up LeBron. And this is one of the more memorable ones. And it was set up like this. It was the 2016 NBA Finals between the Cavs and the 73-9 Warriors, where the Warriors were obviously heavily favored to win. And it was looking that way too when they were up three games to one at one point. And one of the reasons that they got so far ahead was because Draymond had guarded LeBron and had been doing small things to get in his head for the first four games. And everything was going great for them. But when game four was pretty much already decided, with three minutes left, Green and James get tangled up, Green falls to the floor, makes the smallest swing to LeBron's groin, and then they get into a meaningless argument. And it's here when Draymond reportedly called LeBron a bitch twice, which was then followed up by a post-game interview where when asked about the situation, Clay Thompson said, I guess he got his feelings hurt, to which LeBron took exception to. And when it was brought up, he made the reporter repeat what Clay said twice, laughed at it, and said he was going to take the high road and not respond. At least not with his words, because from the looks of it, James let his game do the talking in order to get revenge on Clay and Draymond for what they did and said. And he did exactly that by having a monster game, putting up 41, 16, 7, 3, and 3 to keep the series alive. Now this fantastic game was partly because Draymond was given a flagrant foul after the game for this, when he really shouldn't have been, which put him over the limit and led to a one game suspension for game 5. So he wasn't able to guard James, but if he was, there's a good chance that they wouldn't have won this game or the series. But Draymond did get himself into this bad spot because of his past reputation, and LeBron would go on to put up 41, 11, 8, 4, and 3 in game 6, and 27, 11, and 11 in game 7 to complete the comeback and win this series even after Draymond Green returned. And the turning point of this series really did seem to be that altercation and Clay's words after the game. They lit a new fire under LeBron and the Cavs that led them to their historic comeback. So I think it's safe to say that in this case, once they saw how LeBron came out in Game 5, they instantly regretted talking trash. Number 5, we got Purple Shirt Guy. This trash talking experience as some of you may remember didn't come from another player, but it came from this fan in a purple shirt that caught everyone's attention at the time. This man had been talking trash to players all game, but his infamous moment came within the last minute of the Hornets and Heat game. When Miami was up 90-88 to with 50 seconds left on the clock, the man stood up and started yelling at Wade, telling him it's time for him to retire. To which Wade responded by hitting a 3 pointer right in front of this guy, putting his team up by 5 in what should have shut purple shirt guy up. But the man just kept going and kept yelling at him. So the next time down the court, on the same exact side, Wade hits a clutch fadeaway and gets right up in this guy's face and yells back at him to sit down. And then Wade followed that up by a mean block and then this image of Dwayne staring the poor guy down. His heckling definitely lit a fire under Wade that led to his incredible performance to shut this guy up. Wade said after the game, it's definitely a cool moment and a cool story. I appreciate Purple Shirt Guy for being part of this story because he's added to the legend of my career. And it's a good thing Wade finally taught this guy a lesson, because 3 months earlier he did the same exact thing to Kevin Durant, who then went off for 29-11 and 11 in a win against the Hornets. And he was actually so loud and obnoxious in that game that he got handed the rare red card, which is a warning that if they keep it up, they'll get immediately ejected from the game. But apparently that old red card wasn't enough, so D-Wade stepped in for the real lesson. Number 6, who? Here's the most recent case of trash talk backfiring on the list, which came from last year's playoffs between Eric Bledsoe and Terry Rozier. And it started after game 1 of the first round matchup between the Milwaukee Bucks and the Kyrie Irving-less Celtics, where Rozier mistakenly called Eric Bledsoe, Drew Bledsoe. And Eric definitely took it a little too personal, because after game 2 when a reporter asked him how he plans to deal with Terry Rozier, Bledsoe responded with, Who? Terry Rozier. I don't even know who that is. Now not only would this come back to bite him, but it was a terrible thing to even say at the time, because not only did the Celtics win games 1 and 2, and not only did Terry Rozier outscore Bledsoe 23-9 in game 1, and 23 to Bledsoe's 12 in game 2, but the man crossed Eric and hit a game winner over him in the first game. So he definitely knew who he was, and it only got worse from that point, because Rozier would go on and outplay Eric in the next 4 out of 5 games. 
And then Eric even took a cheap shot at him in Game 5, but it was alright because Terry closed out Game 7 and the series putting up 26 and 8 to the sound of fans in the arena chanting, Who is Bledsoe? Rozier finished the series averaging 17, 6, and 4 compared to Bledsoe's 13, 3, and 3. And the two did hug it out after Game 7, but don't let that fool you into thinking he was just gonna let things go. After the series, Donovan Mitchell came to his side and tweeted, Guess he figured out who you are. But even better than that, to take things full circle, the man shows up to Game 1 of the next series against the 76ers wearing a Drew Bledsoe jersey. To let everyone know that he clearly won the exchange. The man tried to trash talk Rozier and make him look bad, but he did it at a terrible time and instantly regretted it after Game 4, Game 5, Game 6, and Game 7. Now if any of you guys have ever had a trash talking moment that you instantly regretted, comment it down below. Just kidding because you'll instantly get roasted. But what you can do is like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you next video.